Hey everybody, this is my first monthly check-in for my No Buy 2019 and uh, I've made myself some lovely chamomile tea because I've been crunching numbers for a little while to try to figure this all out and uh, yeah, uh, there's a reason I didn't become an accountant. So the funny thing is, I actually technically ended up losing money this month, um, <laughs> which is unfortunate. But what happened was because of the holidays at the end of the year, I had a couple of December bills carry over into January. So I actually doubled up on several of my bills this month. But when I calculated all of that out, like I just focused on the bills that were due this month that didn't carry over because the payment had completed processing, um, I did fairly well. Um, and I'm, I'm really pleased with the results. But technically, I lost money this month. <laughs> so like I said, um, I did some number crunching and tried to like figure out exactly what all I had spent money on. I've tried to keep track of everything. I'm not going to say that I was 100% accurate because honestly, I've never been one to like keep up with my, my finances in that way. But I was very diligent for this month. Not sure how diligent I'm going to be for all future check-ins because, man, even when you're not spending money, it's still really hard to track everything. And I try to categorize everything. I'm sure there's software out there that would do this better. And maybe I just need to, like, find a good budget app for my phone to where I can enter in the information as I make the purchases rather than trying to, like, save receipts and check my bank accounts and everything like that. I don't know. Um, but... This this time around, I tried to do like a pen and paper method, and it did not work out. But like I said, I am pretty pleased with the results. And I even like consciously made some purchases this month that I knew weren't technically necessities, like a special food treat, or I got a massage at one point. And so I, I did spend some money on things like that that I didn't have to spend. So I very easily could have saved, I would say, probably another $100 this month. Um, by just not making those purchases. But I think ultimately those purchases are worth it, especially like um, things like the massage. Um, I, throughout this month, filmed clips of myself and I'm going to cut away to those uh, and kind of have a very fresh response. One of them was the reasoning of why I decided that a massage was a necessary expense. And so I guess I'll do that now. I don't know, I don't have a plan for this video. And so today's been the first day that's been like an actual struggle to try to determine what I'm able to buy and what I'm not able to buy. Um, because it's still fairly early on and part of me thinks that I need to go grocery shopping and part of me thinks now there's still a ton of stuff that you already have that needs to be used. Um, and it's kind of just a battle of, of wits on whether or not the convenience of having some easier to make items is is worth the cost or if I just need to buckle down and use some of the food that I already have even though it's it's not as convenient like it's it takes a little longer to cook it takes a little longer to prep I'll have to be a little bit more creative and uh, yeah it's I don't really know what the answer is yet so I just had my first major haul on a no buy and yeah I basically realized that I had a couple of essential items that I needed to pick up and so I just brainstormed and figured out all of the essential items that I could that I knew were eventually going to run out probably sometime this month or next and tried to stock up. So I spent about $37 and got a whole bunch of stuff to kind of prevent me from having to go back to the store over and over again because I think that's going to help me in this challenge is to not have to repeatedly go back to the store to pick up one item and then be constantly tipped by all the other items that are around me. So yeah, that's my that's my $37 worth of essential items. Got some toilet paper and paper towels, a bunch of kitty litter, um, I think I got some oatmeal and dryer sheets and some dish soap in there and then frozen fruit and vegetables there. So $37 spent and there's the cat. So much of shopping for me was the activity part of it. Like I did a lot of like used book hunting. Like I would go to thrift stores and and library sales and try to find amazing 
uh, deals on books, and part of that hunt was like an an activity was a thrill. It it it, it gave me like excitement um, to to a further extent than something like just going on Amazon and ordering a book would have. It's the activity aspect of of going to like thrift stores and and seeing what you find like just discovering things that you weren't even looking for and like my brain tells me that that's dumb that I if I don't need the stuff I shouldn't be out there looking for it but my brain also tells me that if that activity brings you in enjoyment then why why shouldn't you do that and so my like my brain's just wrestling back and forth in some ways like I really hate the no buy like I really hate not being able to go and have that treasure hunt and have that experience and I feel like you know there's a lot of different factors to this and I can't necessarily say that this is the cause of it but I feel like I've kind of been like down the past couple of weeks um and I just haven't really had as much energy or as much like get up and go as I normally do like I just want to stay and lounge around the house I don't want to go out and maybe a big motivator for me for getting out of the house a lot of times like oh well if you get out of the house you can stop at such and such and see if they have any books that you want to buy in stock and like that's that's something that was a big motivator to get me out of the house um and now I just kind of want to nest but you know it's also like the middle of January and this stuff will, will probably pass um, like I'll figure out other things that I can do that gets me excited to get out of the house and in, in general like mid-January you don't want to get out of the house much because it's dark and cold and nasty all the time um, so I can't necessarily say that that's the reason why I'm not feeling super amped and want to like get up and go but I feel like it was one of the things that would motivate me to get out of the house but I honestly don't think like spending more time in thrift stores looking for deals is is the key to helping my mental health of, of not wanting to get out of the house. I mean, I am an introverted person and I know that I benefit from having time at home. Like I just, I need to be able to be at home and rest. But at the same time, I don't, I don't want to get myself in such a, a fog to where I never want to leave the house. And that's been something that I kind of go back and forth on is is that sometimes I don't want to leave the house ever like I just want to stay home for me the hunt of finding cheap books and building up my library was a motivator to to get me out of that situation right it was something I really genuinely enjoyed doing that um, like ticked all the boxes got all the right chemicals working in my brain and made me feel good um, about getting out of the house I don't really I don't really fully know where I am yet it's still too early to tell but like I I feel the absence of shopping in my life like I feel that as an emotional void and it's it's not what I expected so I made a couple of purchases today that I specifically want to talk about um, both of them, since I wasn't really like super strict on how I structured my rules for this no buy, both of them I had to honestly debate whether or not I felt that they were a necessity. And ultimately, I decided to go ahead and make both of these purchases. And I really feel good about them. And I think that that's, that's the ticket is if I feel good about the purchases that I make, not just in a fleeting way, but in a, I'm being very intentional with my purchases, then, then I'm getting something out of this experience. So one of the purchases that I made, um, I had some items that I needed that were actual necessary buys, but I didn't have to get them where I purchased them because where I ended up purchasing them was kind of a more expensive place to buy them from. And I debated back and forth whether this made sense because at the core, the idea of the no buy is to save money. And so did it really make sense to spend more on these items if I could get them cheaper elsewhere? But I think a secondary benefit to a no buy is to be very intentional about the purchases that you're making. And so I bought these items from a store that 
yes, was more expensive, but I appreciated and valued more. Like, the store that I got these items from is one of my favorite stores. And I love it. I love the atmosphere. I love the people. It's a store I want to support. And I've kind of already decided that if there's items that I can buy there, because it's kind of a boutique bookstore, and I'm not going to be spending money on books, because those aren't a necessary item. But they also have some, like, self-care and some food items. And if there's some things there that I need just in my everyday needs list, and I can get them there, I'm going to go ahead and go that route, even though it's going to be more expensive than I, I bought it at, like, Walmart or something. So today I purchased from them, I bought a package of coffee, because I was almost out of coffee, and a bar of soap, and a <laughs> tube of chapstick, because the chapstick that I've been using is, like, two years past its expiration date. And, yeah, that rang up to like 20 bucks. It's not super cheap for those items. But the items that I'm getting are very clean. They support small businesses in a number of ways because not only is the business that I'm purchasing from a small business, but the businesses that they purchase from are also small businesses. So I'm supporting multiple small businesses and there's just a lot of reasons why I feel better about buying those items there even though they're more expensive than I would have saving those few dollars and buying them at a massive retailer. So the other purchase I made today was a massage and that was the one that I really had to think about. Is this a necessity? And I think there are arguments to say that no it's not. There are things that I can do at home to take better care of my back and my posture and everything to where I don't need to have regular massages. But in general I work at a desk and I, I try to have good posture at the desk. I have a very um, expensive ergonomic chair. I do walk around regularly and I try to stretch and and do all of the things that are supposed to help you but still every few months I build up enough tension that I feel like having a massage is a benefit to my overall health. So self-care gets thrown around a lot and some people view shopping as a form of self-care and I could see that there was definitely like endorphins and benefits that I got when I was shopping when I was having that that drive to like try to find the best possible deals and and bring home things that I was really excited about and I got benefits from that but those aren't necessary benefits however long-term self-care decisions things like taking care of my body things like uh, helping to relieve tension and to make my life as a whole a calmer and more enjoyable experience I really think that that's worth the investment and like I said, I w did go back and forth on this, but ultimately, I decided that a massage was a great idea. And I went, and I got my massage, and I feel awesome about it. Again, I'm supporting a local business that I really like. I love my masseuse. She does a great job, and she's really very intentional and caring and respectful. And she does a phenomenal job. Like, the first time I went to her, I had serious back pain. Like, I ha couldn't function back pain, and she helped me through that. I am very much one of those people that believes in preventative treatment and, you know, the idea of curing the disease, not the symptoms, right? So if I have issues with tension and back pain and it gets to the point where I want to start taking pain medication for it, I'm going to go get a massage because in my mind, that's a much better investment, that's much better for my body, and that is a necessity. I'm working on a grocery list. Uh, because I need to renew the grocery store later today and I've kind of made a deal with myself that anytime I go grocery shopping I need to have a list and I need to stick to it but I also need to take the time to make sure that I get as much of what I actually need on that list as possible because I don't want to make a whole bunch of repeat visits to the grocery store that's just it's not an economical use of time so I thought I'd share this with you so far I just started this list and it just it seemed super funny to me so far on my list I have lemons and bay leaves so yeah, I feel like maybe my basic need grocery list is a bit different than a lot of Americans. Mm. It's so hot, but it's so good. Okay, so, um, hi, welcome back. <laughs> so I guess we're going to get into the numbers now. I'm not going to get super thorough in the numbers. I spent a lot of time, like, breaking it all down and putting it all together and really coming up with some very specific numbers for myself. But for the video's sake, I'm just going to round some numbers and give you like some, some bulk numbers that I'm working with 
Um, I think that's just going to be simpler and I don't have to like overly explain everything. So in general, um, this month uh, for my monthly bills, which includes my rent, utilities, and like my vehicle insurance and health insurance, um, I spent right at a thousand dollars a little bit less but right at a thousand dollars and some of that money will come back to me because my roommate reimburses me for some of the the utilities and the the rent but uh that's usually how it happens is i paid in full and then she reimburses me her portion and because we do it that way i'm going to track it to where i pay the entire bill so i calculate that as a payment that i make and then when she reimburses me, I track that as income. So that's lumped in with my salary and all of the other sources of income that I have. So bills were right at $1,000. Uh, gas, food, and like home needs such as toilet paper and soap and all that stuff that you have to buy, $215, I believe. Um, the bulk of that was food. And then gas was the, the second most expensive. But honestly, gas was pretty cheap this month. Um, I didn't drive as much because weather prevented me a few times and then just gas prices are down so I expect that to go up and then I kind of have like just a miscellaneous category but this will basically encompass my entertainment any like donations I make gifts um, any self-care I things like the massage that I mentioned earlier and then um, if I have to replace something so this is kind of just a lump sum miscellaneous category and on this category I have not done this math yet I think that all combined is around 140 I'm just giving you rounded numbers so in total my expenses for this month is right around one thousand three hundred and forty five dollars income which again includes like salary and then my roommates portion of bills and that's pretty much it um, I don't, I don't have a lot of sources of income, but anyway, that total is about $1,735. Again, I'm rounding to get, get some easy numbers to work with. So I'm just shy of banking $400 this month, which is actually really good for me. Um, I would say that, uh, in my good months before, if I was carrying over I was carrying over maybe $200. That would be a good month for me to carry over $200 from the previous month. Um, so the fact that I have essentially doubled what I am saving is pretty exciting to me. Let me think. If I can manage to save $400 a month, if I set that as my goal, $400 a month, then in a year's time, I will have saved $48 hundred dollars <laughs> I think that's right right 400 times 10 plus an additional 800 yeah good forty eight hundred dollars I don't know how consistent I'm gonna be with these updates as far as like these number breakdowns because honestly I hate tracking this stuff um, I'm gonna try to do some research and find a good budget app that is pretty automated that I can just enter in numbers and it calculates all of the stuff at the end and then I can just spit numbers at me and I don't have to think about this as much um, I'm sure that exists so once I find that I'll, I'll be sure to share that in a future update because I think that's gonna make it easier but even still just the remembering is the hardest part of remembering to enter in that information and and I'm not gonna say that this is 100% accurate I, I looked Based on my balances at the beginning of the month and at the end of the month, this seems to track. But yeah, overall, it hasn't been too difficult. Um, I have mostly like unsubscribed to all of my promotional emails, so I don't get those anymore. But I do still have a lot of things on like Facebook. Facebook's a big thing for me. Like there's a bunch of stores and places that I would always shop at that I still like on Facebook and still see all of their posts. So I'm still very much exposed to that. But yeah, I'm just kind of like learning as I go along. I didn't set any real strict rules on myself for this reason because I wanted to work on developing habits that were gonna be better for me overall as far as how I spend money and intentional spending and not 
buying stuff to just get rid of and uh, I think overall that this is a good experience for me and yes I bought stuff this month that wasn't a necessity um, but I've never really like approached this the idea like I can't have any indulgences I can't like I, I, I'm buckling down to the point where I eat r plain rice and drink water for every meal like I'm, I'm going to still indulge and enjoy myself but I'm going to be very intentional about it and, and really make sure that when I do invest in some of those things that aren't necessities, that they are things that I actively want and will get my value out of rather than just stuff that's going to take up space, not be used, and be a waste of money. And uh, yeah, I think that this has been a good first step in that direction. But yeah, I guess I'll check in again in a month, see how February went. It's a shorter month. So there's, there's less time for me to slip up in February. So I'm optimistic.